Today I'm going to show you how to create a sports logo in Affinity Designer. Let's get started. Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to create this sports logo in Affinity Designer. If you haven't already, you may want to go to the Affinity website and download the trial version of Affinity Designer so that you can follow along with this tutorial. This trial version will work on a Mac or Windows computer. I've put the link in the description below if you need to take a minute and go download it. If you have an iPad, there is an iPad version, but there's no free trial. The techniques I'm going to show you in this video will work on the iPad, but if you want me to make an iPad version of this tutorial, please let me know in the comments section below. So the first thing you want to do is pick out a couple of fonts to use for your design. I've got three different script fonts here that'll work for the team name, and then I have Collegiate, which I'm going to use for the school name. And I'm pretty sure everybody has Brush Script on their computer. The Ballpark, you can download from Defont. Pilsner, I think I had to buy that one, but they may have a free version. And then the Collegiate font, you can download from Defont. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new page here, and we can get started. Alright, so I'm going to select my text tool. I'm going to come over to my character palette. And I'm going to choose my script font that I'll be using for my team name. And I'm going to use the name Knights. I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to grab the corner and hold command to scale that from the middle. All right, so the next thing we want to do is adjust our spacing. And you can either use the tracking here in the character palette. And I can see that you're not really going to work. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and convert this to outlines. I'm going to go layer, convert to outlines, and then do layer, ungroup all. So that way I can break this up and just manually adjust all the letters. So I'm going to select those, click and drag, and if I hold the shift key down, it'll drag those straight across. And then I'm just going to bring one at a time over here and line them up the way I want them. Just bring them over. Just make sure there's no little humps when you line them up. Now this letter, it keeps snapping because I have snapping turned on. So while you're holding the shift key, if you add the option key, it'll temporarily turn off snapping so you can line that up. And then let go of the mouse and then let go of the two buttons so it'll stay in place. All right, let me finish these. A few more letters. And then the S and we're done. I want to go ahead and select all of them, come over here to my Pathfinder tool, and I want to weld those together with the Add button. And now you can see that's all welded together into one graphic. All right, now that we have this all ready, what we want to do is rotate this a little bit. So with the Move tool selected, you can either grab this little handle at the top and rotate it, or you can hover just outside of a corner and click and rotate it. And if you want to rotate it from a certain point, if you come up here and you click on the Show Rotation Center, you'll see that it adds a little dot here in the middle, and that's your rotation point. But if you want to rotate it from a corner, what you can do is just click on that and drag it to the corner, and then you can grab this handle and rotate it, or you can click right outside of one of the corners and rotate it like that. So I'm going to switch my palette over to my transform palette and I want to rotate this about seven degrees. So that way I get this at the angle that I want. Now you can rotate it however much you want. If you want to rotate it more, you can or less. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our pen tool and we're going to create the tail. Let me blow this up a little bit. And I'm just going to click on that. So my pen will kind of snap to that line. I want to start on the inside here. I want to click there, click here. Then if I hold the command key down, that'll turn into my node tool and I can adjust that. And then we're just going to come on down and straight across here. So from here, I'm going to make a note here. And I want to scale this down just a little bit so I can see the whole page. Then I'm going to come over here and add another node. And I want to make sure I keep that pretty straight across there. And I want to kind of keep it the same distance. So I'm going to get my node tool, bring that up a little bit. And then we can just adjust these handles a little. 
get that curve the way we want it. Now we we'll click back on this node and I want to get rid of this handle so I'm going to option click on that handle to get rid of it and now what I want to do is uh, come on down here I'm going to click about here then I'm going to come back to here make another node there come back around let me blow this back up and I'm going to click right in here to add a node and uh, click back on this one to finish that off and I want to get rid of these two little handles because I don't need that curve in there so I'm just going to option click on those two handles to get rid of them now I'm just going to adjust this so it comes off of the S real smooth and then we're going to adjust this curve here Get that looking pretty smooth. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. And now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of curve to these lines. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my command key and hover over that line. And when you get that little squiggly, you can click to add a node. So I'm going to add a node there. And then I'm just going to pull this up. And I want to keep this area pretty straight because that's where we're going to add our school name. We can adjust that a little bit. If you need to, we can move this node to smooth that out. And then I want to bend this line in some. So I'm just going to click and drag it to bend that in. And that's looking pretty good. So you may want to just... Alright, once you get that drawn the way you want it, and you can do this any shape you want, there's tons of different shapes you can do. Okay, so once you get this drawn, just select it. I'm going to come up here to either my color or my swatch palette, and I have like a stroke on this, so I'm going to just click on this double-ended arrow right here to switch the color from my stroke to my fill. That way it has a fill but no stroke. Now we can just look and make sure it looks good once we fill it with a color. And I still want to adjust this a little bit. Alright, yeah, I mean you can sit and play with this and, you know, work with it with as much as you want to get the shape that you want. There we go. I think that looks a little better. And uh, I'm just going to select all this and kind of move it over a little bit. But after you get this drawn, just click on that tail. And we want to make a copy of that. So I'm just going to press Command J to make a duplicate. And I'm just going to come over here and change the color of that one. And then I'm just going to drag both of those curves to the very bottom of my layers palette. And I want to go ahead and click on this name. And I want to go ahead and make a copy of that as well. So I'm just going to press Command J to make a duplicate. I want to change the color of that one as well. So I'm just going to click on that. And so these two layers, these two pink layers I have, I'm just going to turn those off for right now. So we can just work with these two black layers. Okay, so since this G goes into the tail, what we want to do is knock out around this. So if, if your team name doesn't have a letter that goes down into the tail, then you can just skip this step. But if you do have a letter that goes all the way in there, I'm going to show you how to do a knockout around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to add a stroke. So I'm going to come up here to my color, bring the stroke to the front. I'm just going to click on the white to give it a white stroke. Come down here to my stroke palette. I'm just going to raise the stroke up. And you'll see how much knockout that's going to be. And probably around 12, 12 to 14 points will probably work pretty well. I think I'm going to do about 14. So once you get the stroke the way you want it, come up to layer and expand stroke. Then what you want to do is select all of that, come up here and weld that together. So now it's just all one graphic. And now we want to knock this 
G out of the tail. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and just delete these nodes right here at the end of the S. So that way it doesn't knock off part of our tail. So let's get our node tool and we'll just select these nodes here on the end and press the delete key on the keyboard to delete them. That way it's not going to cut off part of our tail right there. Now we'll go back to our move tool. Now with our name selected, just press shift and click on the tail to select both pieces. Now you're going to come up here to the Pathfinder tools and click the minus button to subtract that. And now you'll see that that's knocked out. And if we come back over here to our layers palette and turn on that layer that we turned off, you'll see that how that's going to fit in there. All right. And uh, we need to go ahead and make another copy of this since we deleted that one. I'm going to press command J to make another copy of that. And I'm just going to change the color of that one. So this tail that we just knocked that G out of, let's go ahead and turn that one off. I'm going to go ahead and turn that purple one off. The pink text layer and that pink tail layer, turn both of those on. And if you skip the part about knocking out the G, then go ahead and follow these steps here because you'll need to do this to finish your design. So select those two copies, the name and the tail, and we're going to weld those together using the add button. And now in our layers palette, let's drag that layer to the very bottom of our layers. And I'm going to turn on those other two layers we turned off. So let's select that and let's select the tail that we knocked out those two and let's weld those together. So now all that's one piece and all that's one piece. So this top layer, let's go ahead to the layers palette and lock that layer. So that way it won't get moved. And we want to add a stroke to this bottom layer so we can make that shadow layer. So just click on the bottom layer in your layers palette and we'll just click here to choose a color. Then we're going to go to the stroke and add the same color to the stroke. Then come down to the stroke palette and increase the size of the stroke. And you'll see our shadow layer starting to form. And you can make this as thick as you want to make it. I'm just going to do mine about 25, about right there. I think that looks pretty good. Now this top layer in the layers palette, let's go ahead and choose that, the one that's locked, and turn that off for a minute. So we just have the pink one and select all that. Come up to layer and choose expand stroke. And now we just want to click and drag to select all of that. And we're going to weld all of that together using the add button. Now we'll turn that other layer back on and there we have our design but now we need to add the school name in here so i'm going to grab my text tool again it's going to click down here go back to my character palette and i'm going to choose that sf collegiate i'm going to do the bold it's going to type the name of my school so i'm going to type kings park hs it's going to change that to a different color so we can see it and then we can drag it up here on top and we're going to have to rotate this to fit in here. So again, just either grab this handle or you can grab a corner and just rotate that so that it kind of fits in there. If you need to make it a little bigger, just click and drag, make it a little bigger. I'm going to make mine a little narrower, so I'm just going to move that up a little. And I'm just going to kind of fit mine in there like that. Okay, so now we have a little issue here with the G. Let me move this down just a little bit more. Whenever we knock this out of the tail, when we knock the school name out of the tail, we don't want to knock it out of the G. So we need to go ahead and edit these two using our node tool. So first of all, let's click on it, come up to layer, convert to curves, layer, ungroup all, and then we're going to come over here to the pathfinder and click add to weld all those together. Now we can grab our node tool and we'll just blow this up a little bit so we can see. And we just want to cut these parts of the letter off that are overlapping the G so that when we knock it out, it won't knock out part of the G. So I want to click here to add a node. I want to click here and add a node. And then I want to just click on this one and hold shift click these other nodes, then just press delete on your keyboard. So that way it's not covering up the black part of the G anymore. Now on the P, I'm just going to click and add a node there and there, and then click this node and delete that one. So, so nothing is touching the G. Now I'm going to zoom back out, grab my move tool again. So with the school name selected, we want to shift 
and click on the black part of the design so we can knock out the name from the black part. But if you'll look over in our layers palette, the black layer is locked. So we need to click on that lock to unlock it. Now we can select the black layer and shift click on the school name. We have both of those pieces. Come up here to the Pathfinder and subtract that. And now our design is complete. And I know I've said this before, but if you're new to this process or you're new to Affinity Designer, just follow this tutorial a few times and you'll be creating your own sports designs on your own in no time at all. The more you practice with this software, the better you'll get. The key is to keep learning and to never give up. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you click the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload new videos. And if you want to follow me on social media, all of the links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later. I'm a bad, 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 I'm a